Hey guys, Madison here, back for another Film Friday. This week's movie is Valentine's inspired because this is my last movie reaction before Valentine's Day coming up next week. And so I thought, I need to pick a romance movie, I need to pick a good love story, and I also was in the mood for another Audrey Hepburn movie. I was officially introduced to her a couple months ago now, back in, or a few months ago now, back in October, when I watched Wait Until Dark. That was my first ever Audrey Hepburn movie, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I really enjoyed her, and I was like, now I need to watch all the Audrey Hepburn movies, so I figured it was time to uh, mark another one off the list, check off another one that a lot of people have been recommending to me for a while now, and that is Roman Holiday. I know nothing about this movie except that it stars Audrey Hepburn and Gregory Peck, who I am not familiar with. I don't think I've ever watched a movie with him in it as far as I know but a lot of people recommended this to me as something they think I'll really like. I assume that it involves a holiday in Rome, but apart from that, I know nothing, but I was told that it could be a good Valentine's Day pick, so I picked this one, no poll this week. I just decided to make one of my occasional executive decisions, and I said I'm watching Roman Holiday for Valentine's Day. So yeah, I'm excited to watch this, guys. Without further ado, let's jump in and let's check out Roman Holiday. Here we are in Rome. When in Rome. Oh, I love that. Entirely recorded in Rome. I miss that kind of authenticity in today's movies. They don't shoot enough on location anymore. I Spy, costumes by Edith Head. So I know they're gonna be fantabulous. Paramount News brings you a special coverage of Princess Anne's visit to London. She gets a royal welcome from the British. Thousands cheer the gracious young member of one of Europe's oldest ruling families. There she is. She's a princess. And so to Rome, the eternal city, highlighted by the band of the crack Bersaglieri Regiment. The smiling young princess showed no sign of the strain of the week's continuous public appearances. A formal reception and ball in her honor was given by her country's ambassador to Italy. What country is she from? Did I miss it? Is it a fictional country like Genovia? <laughs> I love that dress. Monsignor Altamonte. Eccellenza piacere di conoscerla. Sir Hugo Marcy de Farmington. Good evening, Sir Hugo. Good evening, Your Royal Highness. Free Herr Erika Messingferner Berienfeld. Good abend. <laughs> Getting achy feet. I know the feeling. Sir Hari Singh and Karak Singh. So happy. Count and Countess von Marstrand. Man, how many people does she have to greet? Two hours later. <laughs> Hassan Eldin Pasha. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Someone help her. How has no one noticed? That's your job. <laughs> Nice save. Very smooth. That would be my worst nightmare, like having to dance with a bunch of complete strangers. I hate all my night guns. And I hate all my underwear, too. <laughs> Why can't I sleep in pajamas? Pajamas? Just the top part. <laughs> Listen. Please put on your slippers and come away from the window. Your milk and crackers, they'll help you to sleep. 
Now, my dear, if you don't mind, tomorrow's schedule. 8.30, breakfast here with the embassy staff. 9 o'clock, we leave for the Polinari Automotive Works. 10.35, inspection of food and agriculture organization. 10.55, the new foundling home for orphans. 11.45, back here to rest. No, that's wrong. 11.45, conference here with the press. <laughs> the opposite of rest. 3.05, presentation of a plaque. Thank you. 4.45, you back do? here to change Sean. your uniform. So She's on the verge of a mental breakdown. Good day! No, no! It's all right, dear, it didn't spill. I don't give it spilled up nuts. I don't give my drowned in it. I mean, to be honest, that schedule's making me tired just listening to it. And she only made it to lunchtime. <laughs> she had already listed off like six events. I'm very ashamed, Dr. Banakovan. Suddenly I was crying. It's most important she be calm and relaxed for the press conference, Doctor. Give the girl a break. She's too young for this. I'll be calm and relaxed. I'll, I'll bow and I'll smile and... I'll improve trade relations and I, and I will. There she goes again. No, no, Give her no. something, Dr. Clean. <laughs> What's that? Sleep and calm. What? Don't give her a shot. Oh my gosh. She just needs to cry. Let her get it out. Feel any different? You will. It may take a little time to take hold. Best thing I know is to do exactly what you wish for a while. Thank you, Doctor. Good night, ma'am. Good night, Doctor. curse of royalty they don't get to be just normal human beings <laughs> wanting to sneak off be a normal person for a while whatever he put in her arm it didn't work <laughs> there's no taming this free spirit Well, good thing she wasn't guarded very closely, or escaping would have been much more difficult. Oh gosh. She has no idea where she could end up. Could end up in a bad part of town. Sleep for a little while. <sighs> One more round, and I'm going to throw you gents right out in the snow. Say what? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I got to get up early. What do you mean early? My personal invitation says 11:45. Yeah, see you at Annie's little party in the morning. Good night, Joe. Stay so All right, little seven card stunt. Okay, I was wondering, is this Gregory Peck? And it is. Pretty sure. How are you this evening? Well, whatever he shot her up with is taking effect now. Hey, wake up. Thank you very much, delighted. No, thank you. Charmed. Charmed, too. You may sit down. I think you better sit up. Much too young to get picked up by the police. Police? Yep, police. You know, people who can't handle liquor shouldn't drink it. If I were dead and buried and I heard your voice beneath the sod, my heart of dust would still rejoice. <laughs> what do you know? You're well-read, well-dressed, snoozing away in a public street. Oh... Uh, uh. This is not an ideal situation. Get yourself some coffee. You'll be all right. Yeah, he's like, I should leave her, but also I shouldn't leave her. Come on, climb in the cab and go home. You got any money? Never carry money. That's a bad habit. All right. I'll drop you off. Come on. 
Where are we going? Where do you live? Coliseum. Now, oh, come on. You're not that drunk. Coliseum. She lives in the Coliseum. It's wrong, Andres. Senor, excuse uh, me. Via Marguta 51. Via Marguta 51. Oh, molto bene. That's where he's staying, isn't it? Mille per te. For me? Si. Oh, grazie mille. Okay, okay. Take a little bit of that. Yeah. Take her wherever she wants to go. Uh, uh. Hmm? But she doesn't know where she wants to go. <laughs> yes. This is not my problem, see? It's not your problem, it's not my problem. You don't want girl, yeah? Me don't want girl. Police. Maybe she want girl. Okay, okay. Bob uh -huh. Benny, Bob Benny. And he's got to be careful so that people don't think, like, he drugged her or something. It's just the 50s. He's got to be careful about appearances. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Wrong door. elevator. No. Can I sleep here? That's the general idea. Can I have a silk nightgown with rosebuds on it? I'm afraid you'll have to rough it tonight. Good job. Sorry, honey, but I haven't worn a nightgown in years. <laughs> Will you help me get undressed, please? Girl, she has lost all inhibitions. Okay. I'm surprised he didn't just say, figure it out yourself. There you are, you can handle the rest. May I have some? No. I've never been alone with a man before, even with my dress on. With my dress off, it's most unusual. <laughs> I feel like she's going to be mortified when she comes to her senses. On this one. These are pajamas. You gotta climb into them. You understand? Thanks. Or she can just sleep in her clothes. I think that would be easier at this point. On the couch, is that clear? You know my favorite poem. Arethusa rose from her couch of snows in the Acroceronian mountains. Keats. Shelley. Everything will be all right, see? It's Keats. I'll be it's Shelley. <laughs> Keats. <laughs> you have my permission. To withdraw. Thank you very much. No trace, Your Excellency. Have you searched the grounds? Every inch, sir, from the attics to the cellar. I must remind you that the princess is the direct heir to the throne. This must be classified as top crisis secret. Now we must notify their majesties. Uh-oh. Heads are gonna roll. Hopefully not literally. I don't feel like it's that kind of movie. <laughs> Like he's just gonna try to roll her onto it and she's gonna go rolling all the way off. So happy. The pleasure's mine. Cover story, she's sick. <laughs> Not she's missing. Smoked the prince's interview. <laughs> Don't worry, dude. You're not missing nothing. I mean, that's just legit. Her picture. Is he finally gonna realize who is in his hotel room? Mr. Hennessy has been looking for you. Uh oh. been looking for me? We start our days at 8.30 in this office. We pick up our assignments. I picked mine up last night. You've already been to the interview? Sure, I just got back. All my apologies. How did Her Highness react to the idea of a European Federation? She thought it was just fine. Dude, just accept that you were late and don't try to lie your way out of it. It's not gonna end well. By the way, what was she wearing? Did you say she was wearing gray? 
Well, she usually wears grey. It was a kind of a grey. I think you described it very well. In view of the fact that our highness was taken violently ill at three o'clock this morning, and has had all her appointments for today cancelled in toto. All right, all right. I overslept. If you ever got up early enough to read a morning paper, you might discover little news events. Now you look twice as bad because you tried to lie about it. If I were you, I would try some other line of business, like mattress testing. He's shook. <laughs> well, that is the princess. Take a good look at her. You might be interviewing her again someday. Am I fired? When I want to fire you, you won't have to ask. You know you're fired. What's he gonna do now? Pronto? Gee, my, it's Joe Bradley. I want you to hurry up to my place and see if there's somebody there asleep. Aspetta. Just breathe, man, breathe. Bellissima. Giovanni, I love you. Now listen. A gun? Nobody goes in and nobody goes out. Pepito? Okay. You still here? How much would a real interview with this dame be worth? I'm talking about her views on everything. The private and secret longings of a princess in a private, personal, exclusive interview. With pictures? Could be. How much? That particular story would be worth five grand to any new service. Oh, boy. I want you to shake on that. And you realize, of course, Her Highness is in bed today and leaves for Athens tomorrow. Five hundred says you don't come up with the story. It's a deal. Let's see, you're into me for about five hundred now. When you lose this bet, you'll owe me a thousand. He has no idea. Oh, my gosh. That's just gonna make people way more suspicious than they would be. Otherwise, they'd think nothing of it. Nobody is come. Nobody is go. Absolutely nobody. Well, thanks a lot. Gonna see where this is going. He's gonna try to weasel his way in, get close to her, so she opens up, gives him the answers he wants for his juicy interview. She thinks they're forming a genuine bond, and then boom, she's gonna be so mad. Heart's broken when she thinks it was all a lie. It was just for the story. But no, he really does fall for her along the way. Man, that was some strong stuff that guy gave her last night. That would have been... That would have totally messed up her next day that she was supposed to get some rest before, you know, all those appointments. And she's still knocked out. Like, that dude should be fired. <laughs> Your Highness? Yes, what is it? The difference in how he's treating her now. <laughs> the pillow's at the wrong end. Dr. Bonacone. Oh, oh, sure, yes. Well, uh, uh, you're fine. Much better. Is there anything you want? Mm, I dreamt and I dreamt. What did you dream? I dreamt I was asleep in the street and a young man came and he was, he was so mean to me. He was? It was wonderful. Good morning. Oh, perfect. Are these yours? Did, did, did you lose something? <laughs> no. She was afraid she had. Would you be so kind as to tell me where I am? Well, this is what is laughingly known as my apartment. Did you bring me here by force? No. No, no. Quite the contrary. So I've spent the night here with you. From a certain angle. Yes. How do you do? <laughs> how do you do? <laughs> she took it well. Bradley, Joe Bradley. Delighted. You don't know how delighted I am to meet you. What's your name? Anya. Would you like a cup of coffee? What time is it? Oh, about 1.30. I must get dressed and go. There's lots of time. Oh, no, there isn't, and I've, I've been quite enough trouble to you as it is. You're not what I'd call trouble. I'm not. I'll run a bath for you. There you are. <laughs> Ew. 
It's too late to preserve your pride and dignity, Anne. <laughs> What's he sneaking off to do now? Until Irving, can you get over here in about five minutes? Joe, I'm up to my ears in work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's front page stuff, that's all I can tell you. But it's a big story. It's got to have pictures. I'm busy now, and I'm meeting Francesca at Rocca's in a half an hour. And... Oh, no. The cleaning lady. Fuori <coughs> subito. <coughs> What is she saying? Vergogna. Uh, <laughs> Why is the lady getting on to her? She could be staying in there with him. There you are. I must go. Well, we've only just met. How about some breakfast? I'm sorry, I haven't time. Well, I'll go along with you, wherever you are going. That's all right, thank you. I can find the place. Thank you for letting me sleep in your bed. You must have been awfully uncomfortable on that couch. No. Goodbye, Mr. Bradley. Goodbye. Well, there goes his prize story. He's gonna have to follow her. I almost forgot. Can you lend me some money? How much was it that she wanted? Well, I, I don't know how much I need. How much have you got? She has no qualms about asking the man for money, does she? I I'll arrange for it to be sent back to you. What is your address? Via Marguta, 51. Via Marguta, 51. Joe Bradley. Thank you. How do you balance that on your head while riding a bicycle? Oh, the fountain. She wants to get her hair done. What a wonderful uh, hair you have. Just cut, thank you. Just cut? Wants to cut it. Here? More. Here? Even more. Where? There. Are you sure, miss? I'm quite sure, thank you. Chopping it all off. Off. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Off. <laughs> Is she gonna love it or is she gonna hate it? It's a nice little camera you have there. You don't mind if I just borrow it, do you? It's my camera. Not a smart move. Why you not come dancing tonight with me? Please, you come. I wish I could. But but you are friend. I not think they recognize you. I don't think they will. <laughs> that was exactly what she had in mind. No one will recognize her. After nine o'clock, I'll be there. Dancing on river. Remember Saint Angelo. If you come, you will be most pretty of all girls. Thank you. Oh. Thank that you. Oh, brava, signorina. <laughs> Bradley. Bradley. She's checking all the boxes. Haircut, ice cream, flowers. <laughs> He's taking them back. <laughs> Aww. Another famous spot here. We're hitting all the locations. Wow, it's you. Yes, Mr. Bradley. Did you like it? Very much. Mr. Bradley, I have a confession to make. Yes, I ran away last night from school. Now I better get a taxi and go back. Why don't you take a little time for yourself? Live dangerously. Take the whole day. I could do some of the things I've always wanted to. I like to sit a sidewalk cafe and look in shop windows, walk in the rain, have fun and 
Maybe some excitement. Tell you what, why don't we do all those things? But don't you have to work? He is working. One sidewalk cafe coming right up. Now, what would you like to drink? Champagne, please. Must be quite a life you have in that school. Champagne for lunch. Only on special occasions. The last time was my father's anniversary. 40th anniversary of, um, of the day he got his job. What does he do? Public relations. Well, that's hard work. I've heard him complain about it. Why doesn't he quit? People in that line of work almost never do quit, unless it's actually unhealthy for them to continue. Here's to his health, then. What is your work? Oh, I'm a uh, selling game. What do you sell? Secrets. Irving, well, am I glad to see you. Pull up a chair, Irving. Sit down with us. I see you're going to introduce me. This is a very good friend of mine, Irving Radovich. Anya Irving. Anybody ever tell you? You're a dead ringer. Oh. I guess I'll be going. Oh, no, don't do I, anything I, like that, like Irving. Oh, no, sit down. Join us, join us. Just till Francesca gets here. Mm -hmm. What is a ringer? Oh, uh, waiter. It's an Whisper. American <laughs> term, and uh, yeah. it means uh, anyone who has a great deal of charm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. Uh huh. What do you do? I'm in the same racket as Joe, only I'm a. <laughs> I'm awfully oh. sorry, Irving. Yeah. Look, I can take a hint. I'll see you around. Oh, oh but your drink's just here. Yeah, Please. here's Thank your you. drink down. right now, Irving. Sit down, that's a good fellow. This is just a train wreck waiting to happen. If it wasn't for that hair, I, I, I'd I, swear that you... Is he not gonna take a hint? I mean, how many accidents does Joe have to cause? Just send him on his way. He's just... Joe, what are you trying to do? I'll take your hands off him. What would you do for five grand? Have you got your letter? What's that got to do with have it? Have you got it? Yeah, but what are you trying to do to... Listen, she doesn't know who I am or what I do. She's really... Your tin types are going to make this little epic twice as valuable. You're in for 25% of the take. And it takes 5G. Minimum. Hennessy shook hands on it. Okay. Now you shake. Okay, now let me get 30,000. Well, we got to entertain her, don't we? This I want back Saturday. Okay. Now where's your life? Let's go to work. Oh boy, here we go. The journalist and his photographer. Uh, would you care for a cigarette? You won't believe this, but it's my very first. Your first cigarette. Yeah, gizmo works. Well, what should we do next? Should we uh, make out a little schedule? Oh, not that word, oh, please. Manny. Let's just go, huh? Well, how about you, Irving? Are you ready? Uh, yeah, let's go. Yes, yeah, so and no schedules, or she might have another meltdown. Um, this is... She's a grand girl, Irving. No, grand. Uh, five grand, Irving. Ciao. Honey, I gotta work. I'll call you tonight. Oh no, are her parents the king and queen flying in? Oh goodness, the royal entourage. They were supposed to be inconspicuous. You asked for plain clothes. Are they all gonna be going around Rome looking for? So dangerous. Turn around taking a picture while driving. Be a cool shot though. Hey! <laughs> oh gosh. Oh gosh, Prince has gone wild. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> it's chaos. Oh, that's not good. That's not the kind of attention she needs. Oh my gosh, all those people. 
American News Service? What did he mean? <laughs> well, you know, you say you're with the press, you can get away with anything. <laughs> Go to church to get married on a scooter. That's a hot one. <laughs> Joe's a wonderful liar. <laughs> what the? Why are they all so happy? I'm a good liar too, aren't I, Mr. Bradley? The best I ever met. Come with me. The mouth of truth. The legend is that if you're given to lying, you put your hand in there, it'll be bitten off. Let's see you do it. <laughs> Let's see you do it. I'd want to stick my hand in there. <laughs> Make a wish. The chances of it being granted are very slight. Well, what not? I've heard of a wonderful place for dancing on a boat. Hey, why not? Well, anything you wish. And then at midnight, I'll turn into a pumpkin and drive away my glass slipper. It's like the opposite, you know? She's afraid of turning back into the princess. Well, I guess uh, Irving has to go now. I do. Yes, you know, that big business development of yours. I'll uh, see you later, Smitty. Good luck with the big development. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> she was looking out the window at those people wanting to go dance in that first night. Uh oh, there's some of the guys looking for. Her. Krishna Paranoid. Hello. Hello. A spark kindling. <laughs> Mr. Bradley, if you don't mind my saying so, I, I think you are a ringer. Oh, what? <laughs> you spent the whole day doing things I've always wanted to. I never heard of anybody so kind. Also, completely unselfish. Well... <laughs> oh, finalmente! Oh. There you are! Ah, uh, off, all off! Oh, yeah, it's nice without, isn't it? I, Mario Dilani. Old friends? Oh, yes, he cut my hair this afternoon. He invited me here tonight. <laughs> May I enjoy myself? The pleasure. You mind? No, no, go right ahead. Uh, thank you. What was he jotting down a note for? Did I miss anything? You're just in time, pal. Who's Smitty dancing with? Got her hair this afternoon. Made a date for the night. The princess and the barber. Oh, uh, another juicy scandal, I see. Man, there's a whole group of them. They're kind of obvious running around like that. doing fixing her hair the barber can't help himself be kind of nice though like if you're hanging out with a barber he could always tell you when your hair got messed up fix it for you would be great <laughs> it does look slightly better like that i agree your highness you shall dance quietly towards the entrance there is a car waiting mr bradley let me go with you mr bradley uh -oh. I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> oh my gosh. The guitar! <laughs> oh my gosh. I love how the barber just jumped in like, yeah! Side the bridge. Random cat. 
Bradley's gonna be in huge trouble for like abducting the princess. Oh, right in the knee. <laughs> the guitar. How far did they swim? Say, you know, you were great back there. You weren't so bad yourself. Ooh. I guess we better get Irving's car and get out of here. Joe's catching feelings. He's not happy about it. He's like, wait, my job is to like throw her under the bus basically. But now he likes her. Conflict ensues. Suit you. You should always wear my clothes. Seems I do. <laughs> <laughs> I thought a little wine might be good. Shall I cook something? Nothing to cook. I always eat out. You like that? Well, life isn't always what one likes. No, it isn't. You've had quite a day. A wonderful day. A special news bulletin in English and Italian. Tonight, there is no further word from the bedside of Princess Anne in Rome. This has given rise to rumors that her condition may be serious, which is causing alarm and anxiety among the people in her country. <laughs> the news can wait till tomorrow. Yes. He's feeling guilty. Sorry I couldn't cook us some dinner. I'm a good cook. I can sew too and clean a house and iron. I learned to do all those things. I just haven't had the chance to do it for anyone. Well, it looks like I'll have to move. I get myself a place with a kitchen. Yes. That was a smoldering look right there. You'll have to go now. <laughs> Something that I want to tell you. No, please. Nothing. I'll just go and get dressed. Oh, when is the fallout coming? It's gonna be coming soon, just gonna find out. Stop at the next corner, please. I have to leave you now. I'm going to that corner there and turn. Promise not to watch me go beyond the corner. Say goodbye. Don't try. I know it's only been a day, but they're so cute together. <laughs> and it's more than just a day to her. It's like freedom that she's never had and getting to live like she's never had. What you gonna do now, Joe? You gonna print that story? Your Royal Highness, 24 hours. They can't all be blank. They are not. But what explanation am I to offer their majesties? You must appreciate that I have my duty to perform. Were I not completely aware of my duty to my family and my country, I would not have come back tonight, or indeed ever again. You have my permission to withdraw. No milk and crackers. That will be all, thank you, Countess. She might as well have slammed the door in her face. Cue all by myself. It's the Prince's story, the exclusive. Did you get it? Uh, no, no, I didn't get it. What? First you come into my office and ask about an exclusive on the princess. Then I get the rumor from my contact at the embassy that the princess is in sick at all and she's out of the town. And then comes the news of the lady's miraculous recovery. It all adds up. Now oh, come on, come on, come on. Where is that story? I have no story. Man, wait till you see these. Urban. No. What's the idea? Joe, look at my pants. Yeah, what? you better come in here and dry them off. <laughs> Did you tell him about Smitty? Mr. Irving. Wait. Irving. There you go again, Irving. Hey, all right, Listen, save that to later. Hey, what kind of a routine is that? What am I supposed to look at? No, just a couple of Irving's dames. You wouldn't like them. Uh, 
When you came back into my office yeah, yesterday... I know. Yesterday at noon, I thought I had a good lead, but I was wrong. There is no story. She's holding the press interview today. Same time, same place. Maybe that's one story you can get. And you owe me 500 bucks. Hey, what gives? I don't know just how to tell you this, but... Eric's not going to be happy about going to all that trouble and then not getting his cut. There is no story. I mean, not as far as I'm concerned. Hey, the uh, pictures came out pretty well. You... Want to have a look at them? <laughs> That's the first cigarette, huh? Oh, yeah, Rokas. Hey, the mouth of truth. Oh, you want to know the caption I had in mind there? Barber cuts in. The wall where wishes come true, hmm? Lead off with that, then follow up with the wishes? Yeah. <laughs> sure, I got a pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> She's fair game, Joe. You must be out of your mind. He's in love, Irving. In love. You going to the interview? You going? Yeah, it's an assignment. Prison. I see. This is going to be interesting. She's going to find out that he's really a journalist. Please approach. Her Royal Highness. Your Royal Highness, the ladies and gentlemen of the press. She saw him. Her Royal Highness will now answer your questions. Does your Highness believe that Federation would be a solution to Europe's economic problems? in favor of any measure which would lead to closer cooperation in Europe. And what, in the opinion of your highness, is the outlook for friendship among nations? I have every faith in it, as I have faith in relations between people. Speaking for my own press service, we believe that your highness's faith will not be unjustified. I am so glad to hear you say it. <laughs> Wow. Which of the cities visited did your highness enjoy the most? Each in its own way. Each in its own way was unforgettable. It would be difficult to... Rome. By all means, Rome. I will cherish my visit here in memory as long as I live. Photographs may now be taken. I would now like to meet some of the ladies and gentlemen of the press. One gentleman in particular. <laughs> Lampe, New York Herald Tribune. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Irving Radovich, CR Photo Service. May I present your highness with some commemorative photos of your visit to Rome? Thank you so very much. Joe Bradley, American News Service. So happy, Mr. Bradley. I love that what could have been used as blackmail, they just handed to her to commemorate the adventure. Are they just going to go their separate ways? There was so much painful longing in that look. Oh. Part of me thought she was going to come after him. <laughs> Guys, that was so good. A classic 
rom-com with a very not classic ending. I mean, usually you expect the the guy to get the girl at the end and they drive off into the sunset or whatnot. And, and unfortunately that didn't happen in this one, but I kind of loved it. Uh, I mean, I'm always rooting for the guy and the girl to end up together. I always, I, I always prefer happy endings over tragic endings, but this one was so... I loved how beautiful and sweet it was at the end, like, and it didn't go at all the way I thought, like, I was thinking at some point along the way, like, she was gonna find out that he was a journalist and she was gonna get all mad, and, you know, there's usually in rom-coms that, that, like, three quarters of the way through, they have a big fight about something and they split up and they go their separate ways after they were just getting together, and then they, you know, resolve their differences, they they fix the misunderstanding, whatever it is, they fix it at the end and they end up together. But this threw a curveball at me in that she took finding out who he was really well. <laughs> and she took it so well because he didn't end up printing the story about her, you know, handed, uh, handed over the photos, didn't print the story, all that blackmail they had that scandalous story they could have printed about her, they didn't use any of it, and I think she was just so grateful and glad that they didn't, that that erased any anger she might have felt about him lying to her and finding out who and what he really was. That last scene was just like, I don't know. <laughs> that last scene was probably my favorite, I think, in the whole movie because there was so much communicated with just a look and I love scenes like that where it's like minimalist dialogue and a lot communicated with just a look like the silent wistful longing on his face as he's staring up at her and her looking back at him and the realization on her face that she puts it all together and she can't like they can't even say a proper goodbye. I mean, they had their goodbye in the car, but, like, sh they couldn't have a proper goodbye at the end because, like, she's the princess and he's just a journalist and they had to pretend they didn't know each other. So they're just saying it all with looks. And she's just like, happy Mr. Bradley and can't say anything else. And that last shot of the movie, that long tracking shot of him walking out of the, the palace or whatever it was, was just so good. <laughs> and part of me was like, it's going on so long, is she gonna come after him? Is she gonna run after him and like at least say something before he leaves or something? But no, it was like, it was almost like they wanted us to feel that. They wanted us to expect that, like, is she, is she not? And then she didn't and he just keeps walking and walks out and you can just almost see his footsteps dragging of like wishing he could be with her, but they both know it's not realistic. She's a princess, she's royalty and he's just a journalist. Like, it's not gonna work. They inevitably gonna go their separate ways. They're not even from the same country. <sighs> this is such a good movie for the hopeless romantics, but it also is like hopeless romance because they don't end up together at the end, which is, you know, the happy ending is what you expect in movies like this. But I loved that bittersweet ending. I just thought it was really sweet and beautiful that they respected each other as people, the maturity of the, like how they handled the situation. Of like, okay, he didn't spill my secrets, so I'm not going to be mad at him. We're just going to basically shake hands and part ways and we'll always treasure this special day we had together in Rome. Like she said in her answer, like Rome was her favorite place that she visited. And uh, it was just a really sweet, really cute movie. Um, I loved all, I loved all of it being on location. That just adds another level of authenticity to it that I love. Yeah, uh, Gregory Peck is the the definition of tall, dark, and handsome. I loved him. <laughs> I thought he was great, so likable, uh, and I love I love Audrey Hepburn. Again, this is only my second movie of hers, but she's just you could totally believe that she's royalty. Like you don't even question that casting decision because she's just so naturally elegant and graceful and beautiful and poised and she's just like perfect to play any kind of like princess or queen or anything like that she can totally pull it off she's just so classy and 
I loved the costumes. I knew I would because it's Edith Head. She always does the best costumes. So loved just, I loved that pretty princess dress she had on at the beginning. I loved her casual princess look like, you know, traveling around Rome. It was all just so fun. And I really enjoyed this movie, like sweet, funny, uh, they had great chemistry, and then the curveball, like, bittersweet ending even was just, like, on the money, so this was a perfect, perfect watch for Valentine's Day, or as it is for people like me, Singles Awareness Day. <laughs> if you're like me, all my fellow single folks out there, I sympathize, I feel ya. <laughs> and to all my people out there who have their other half. Hold on tight. Enjoy the day with each other. I hope you have a wonderful Valentine's Day. Thank you guys for watching this reaction. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you want to see the full length reaction, head on over to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Madison K Tames. Link in the description below and you can find it there and all of my other full length reactions as well. And you can vote on movie polls. What will I watch next? You can help decide. Thank you guys so much again. Be sure to like this video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't. And I will see you next week for another Film Friday. Bye guys.